Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Marcel Elfers. I'm the author of John Bonnet, The Final Chapter, where handwriting analysis, statement analysis, and behavioral trend analysis meet. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, body language of the interview that Anderson Cooper had with John Ramsey at the time. I believe this was in 2008 or maybe 2012. I'm unsure about the date. Anyway, let's have a look at that. This is uh, John Ramsey at the time. Uh, with the interview in, with uh, Anderson Cooper. Now, what I want you to do is pay attention to how he constantly looks at Anderson when he answers a question. He is engaged. And just like uh, Murdoch, he tends to not yes to convince. He also moves his tongue and wets his lips, just like uh, Alex Murdoch does. Surprised you that you had fear that you would learn the details. Right. I'd have to go through and really understand it. Notice him nodding. I kind of didn't want to go through. Um, you know. So would you attend a trial? Well, I, I, I wondered about that. I wondered if that would, if I would have to be there every day to hear every single verse of detail. I was told that I would not have to be there every day. But and you wouldn't want to? I don't know that I would want to. I, I was still dealing with that prospect when he was, the DNA didn't match and he was released. But it was a uh, kind of an awakening that this is not going to be easy, knowing. It's interesting to hear you say that. I mean, I, I think a lot of people would assume you would want to know. Well, you, you, you do, uh, but it's an ordeal sure. to get there. Um, uh, I mean, it's, it, uh, first of all, Mark, John Mark Carr did not look like this evil monster that I'd imagined that this person would look like. He was kind of a nice guy. Uh, and so it's like, oh, that's not what I would have expected. Um, so it was, um, I had a friend of mine tell me, uh, several years ago, I said, you know, we've been praying that God would reveal the killer for so long. And I wonder why he hasn't done that. And my friend said, well, maybe he knows you're not ready to know that yet. And it, that made sense. Um, you, that, that, that resonated with yeah, you? Yeah, it did. Uh, yeah. And do you still think you're, you're not ready? No, I'm ready now. Yeah, no, it's that, uh, yeah. I mean, I obviously would like to know, you know, what did we do wrong? What, what caused this person to focus on us? And so we see him nodding yes and shaking no at the appropriate times and he's constantly engaged keep that in mind the next question is what do you think happened now watch his behavior thing happened well i think what happened and it's uh, i guess supported by uh, evidence and seasoned people have looked at it is that this person came into our boom did you see that he always looks at John and, uh, Anderson Cooper. And when he said this person, meaning the intruder, he looked down. Let's do that again. Season people have looked at it is that this person. Boom, there it is. He cannot look Anderson Cooper in the eye. And people cannot do that because they are deceptive. He came into our home. Uh, when we were out uh, for dinner on uh, Christmas night and then uh, waited until we went to bed. In this section, uh, Patsy Ramsey, his former wife, who passed away of, uh, from ovarian cancer in 2006, he is being asked whether she had anything to do with it. Again, watch his behavior. I mean, it's hard to imagine, I think, for, for people to imagine what it's like being at the center of this, not only having lost your daughter and dealing with that, but then dealing with the public believing. Yeah. Well, engaged, looks at Anderson Cooper. And your wife. It was the real 
blow and the and the what really brought us to our knees was the loss of a child. So the rest of it was just kind of noise level. You know, mm-hmm. it didn't. It was there. It was, um, but it, that wasn't. That didn't hurt. The hurt. The real mortal, almost near mortal hurt was the loss of a child. Was there ever a moment where you doubted your wife? Oh no, not even for a nanosecond. Mm-hmm. In fact, the police asked that question. What do you think there's any not even for a nanosecond? In fact, the police that for a moment where you doubted your wife? Oh no. Is there ever a moment that you doubted your wife? Oh no. And he turns away. Again, he cannot face Anderson Cooper. And the follow-up is also really interesting. Not even for a nanosecond. Not even for a nanosecond. People that exaggerate tend to lie. Exaggeration is a sign of the opposite. Patsy was involved. That is what it is saying. And the reason is, he could have easily said, oh, not for a moment. No, it's not a moment. It's not even for a nanosecond. That is exaggeration. In fact, the police asked that question. What do you think there's any possibilities? No. And then... He says, even the police ask, and then his voice raises, that he pitches higher. And that happens when you're anxious. Anxiety happens when you lie. Why does it pitch higher? Because anxiety increases, uh, has an increased tension in your vocal cords. That's why your voice gets higher. None. In my book, I explain uh, what I believe happened and all the uh, circumstantial evidence that point in that direction. And although nobody has a uh, well-defined and definite answer, the ransom note was written by Patsy and she tried to convince John to cooperate. It's all in my book and available on Amazon. 